like salutations. Recently, Emily Noel created a tag style video in which she talked about what she would buy if she had $1,000 to spend at Sephora. Lots of other beauty YouTubers have done this video since then, and now I'm joining the fun. Over the past two years, as I've become more of a makeup enthusiast, I think I've bought a total of six things from Sephora because most of my makeup is a drugstore, so I don't really ever shop there. And the few things I have that are on the more expensive side were mostly either given to me or bought when they were decently discounted or in a bundle of some sort. I just don't feel like I need to spend Sephora level money to get great products, so I try to avoid doing that. And because I don't really pay that much attention to Sephora overall, I thought they sold MAC products and I was excited to go and, I mean, buy, you know, fictionally try out a new scent of Fix Plus, because I think they have like pineapple or something now and that sounds really cool, but MAC isn't sold at Sephora, so great job me, that didn't work out. And after a lot of browsing and pondering and feeling silly, I have gathered my picks for this wildly uncharacteristic shopping spree. I'll start with eyeshadow, since that's where about 42% of my allotted thousand dollars disappeared. I've always been interested in the Huda Beauty Neon Pink palette, because I really love the overall look of it. It has some beautiful shimmers, and the two mattes in the center row are really lovely looking, and the packaging is cute, and Huda's eyes aren't creepily staring at me from it, so, you know, there's that. And my brain is just really drawn to pink and purple eyeshadows, and it wants me to collect all of them and put them all on my eyes. So this was a palette of bright, fun pinks, and I had to get it. I mean, in this situation, I probably wouldn't buy it in real life, but anyway. Uh, the next one I got was also from Huda, and that was the Amethyst Obsessions palette, because, like I said, if my brain sees pink or purple shadows, it just goes, ooh, give, I want. So, yeah. <laughs> and if the Sapphire palette was still on the website, then I might have gotten that one too, because I also really like blue eyeshadows, but it was gone, so it didn't get added. And this next palette is probably going to seem redundant based on what I just said, but I also picked out the Violet Voss Sweet Violet palette, because pink and purple shadows are my weakness. Now for a palette that I would definitely never actually want to buy in real life, and that is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Palette of Pops Quad. Say that three times fast if you're bored. I mostly added this to my cart so that my fictional self could double check that there's no way in heck a quad of eyeshadows is worth $53. I wanted to get a Charlotte Tilbury quad of some sort for this experiment, and this one was somehow the least boring option. I probably gifted it to a friend after confirming that Charlotte Tilbury's eyeshadow formula is not in fact magical or life transforming. No offense to anyone who likes Charlotte Tilbury products, I've just always thought they were super overpriced and uninspiring. Vizier eyeshadows are also quite expensive, although I'm told that they're wonderful and blendable and pigmented and all these great things, so they might actually be kind of worth the money. And I was looking through the options available, and a lot of them are very neutral, or just palettes that I wouldn't really want to use. And in order to try both the matte and shimmer formulas from Viseart, I ended up having to get two palettes from them, because Editorial Brights is only mattes, and Boheme is only shimmers. So there goes $160. Viseart, you better be worth it. The last eyeshadow palette is the most extravagant, the Natasha Denona Lila palette. I do have a little 5 pan mini palette from Natasha Denona that I got on sale, and the shadows are fine, they're nothing special, but I've heard that the mini palettes and the big palettes have different formulas going on, so I'd be interested to compare the two. And if I was going to spend $129 on a full Natasha Donor palette, then I guess the Leela is the one that I would want to buy. I seriously doubt the shadow quality actually matches up to that price though, because heesh. Similarly, I thought it might be interesting to compare a full-size Pat McGrath palette to the 5 pan mini palette that, once again, I got on sale, and see if her big palettes really are worth the hype and mind-blowingly great and all these things people say they are. But after looking through the palettes on Sephora's website, I realized I really wasn't drawn to any of them, and the palettes each had maybe three shades that caught my eye, and the rest were just kind of meh? So... I did badly splice together shades from the various palettes into one full-size palette that I would have wanted to buy if it was available, but that was mostly for my own amusement and curiosity. And even if I'm spending somebody else's money on this, buying a full-size Pat McGrath palette even though I don't care for the color story seems super wasteful, so I didn't. Anyway, back to products that actually exist. My final eye-related purchase is a Shiseido Lash Curler. No matter how many things I have tried, the only thing that will actually help my lashes stay curled is waterproof mascara. 
I've used a bunch of different techniques with a regular curler, and I've used a heated lash curler, which is kind of scary by the way, and I don't even know how many mascaras I've tried that are like curl related, supposed to either promote or hold curl. Nothing works and my lashes always just droop back down. They're like my hair, they just flop, they, they don't hold. So anyway, maybe this Shiseido curler is the magical thing that will actually help my lashes hold a curl. I kind of doubt it, but it's worth a try. Next up, some lip stuff, which took another third of the budget away. The first lip thing I thought of was the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. I once discovered that the tester in a Sephora had been freshly opened and no one had like stuck their fingers in it yet, so I got a sample of that and brought it home and I really did enjoy using that because it feels nice and it smells even better somehow. But I've also discovered that there's a Korean dupe of it that smells almost as nice and I bought three 5 gram jars of that for $10. So I don't really need the Laneige version, but this fictional version of me would splurge on the real thing. The second lip product I went for is the Fenty Gloss Bomb. My mother-in-law got me the set of five little mini gloss bombs for Christmas, and since I already know that I enjoy the formula, and that the smell is heavenly, and that they wear really well, I figured I might as well add Fenty Glow to my cart, because I'm pretty much guaranteed to like it. Before leaving the Fenty section, I noticed the Mademoiselle Plush Matte Lipstick and decided to get Midnight Wasabi. <laughs> I could use a good matte emerald green lipstick on my life, and this one had good reviews, and it was on sale. I've heard nice things about the fresh lip balms, and they are apparently very moisturizing. I'm not convinced that they're $24 worth of moisturizing, but if my fictional self is struggling with dryness just as much as my actual self is, then maybe it's worth a shot for her. This next one is admittedly pretty stupid, I'll just get that out of the way now. The Dior Lip Glow is mostly in my cart because of the pretty tube. It looks very fancy, and I feel like just holding it would boost my posh factor by like 200%. So there it is. There are two different Too Faced lip products here, because no matter how much I want to dislike Too Faced overall, they do a really good job of creating products that I want, and that seriously bugs me. So I got one of the shades of their Rich and Dazzling High Shine Sparkling Lip Gloss, and it looks beautiful and sparkly, and it probably smells like candy or something. And then the other one is the Peach Mega Moisture Lip Balm, because the Too Faced peach smell is just so dang good and I want it in candle form so my whole house can smell like that. And living in a desert has made me into quite a lip balm fanatic, so I figured I can add that to my roster of lip balms that I use constantly during the day. Next, I chose four shades of the Urban Decay Vice lipsticks. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say anything bad about these things, only praise, so I'm trusting that I will also enjoy them. I picked two Comfort Mattes, 1993 and Blackmail, and two Creams, Rapture and Twitch. I'm not sure if the Twitch color is intended to look like the color of Twitch the video streaming site, but I kind of hope it is because that's neat. Another formula I got multiple of is the Lancome Lapsalu Lacquer Lipsticks. They're apparently comfortable and shiny but also long wearing and that sounds pretty magical. So I chose Be Unique Rose Fugas and Shine Manifesto. The second to last lip product that I chose is the Clinique Almost Lipstick in Black Honey. This is one of those classic products like Mac Ruby Woo or the Revlon Lip Butters, may they rest in peace, and since I've never tried anything from Clinique, this seemed like a good place to start. This one seems silly because it is, but I got the Taste Beauty Succulent Lip Balm. It came up as I was browsing for the last few things to fill up that thousand dollars, and I just thought it was kind of adorable. I honestly don't really care for plants, and I definitely don't like cacti, but this is really cute, so I got it. The only base product that I chose is a Too Faced Peach Perfect Foundation. I'm not sure if Marshmallow or Cloud would be the better match for my skin tone, but I figured I would leave that decision up to my fictional self because she's probably living A, when there isn't the giant pandemic happening, and B, a lot closer to Sephora than I actually do, so she can figure that out. I really hate that I even kind of want this foundation because I know that I only want it because of that peach smell. And fragrance should not be in foundation, it's pointless and irritates people's skin sometimes, so curse you and your gimmicks, Too Faced. To go on top of that foundation, I also picked out the mini version of the Benefit Dallas Blush. A YouTuber I used to watch all the time really likes this shade, and considering how long it takes to go through a blush, I figured a mini was probably fine. Benefit's packaging is obnoxiously bulky though, so fictional me would probably take the pan out and stick it in a magnetic palette or something. Pretty early on in this process, I decided that I wanted to add a bottle of Guerlain's Shalimar perfume to my cart. This is a very out of character move for someone whose perfumes are all from Bath and Body Works, but a sweet old lady used to give my mom bottles of this for her birthday sometimes, and I thought it would be fun to have a bottle of my own. The next few things were all added towards the end of my browsing. 
I'd gathered a lot of makeup and decided to put the rest of my mythical gift card towards various moisturizers because my skin is as dry as an overbaked cake and I have eczema roughness plaguing my hands and elbows all the time. Skincare purchase number one is First Aid Beauty's KP Bump Eraser Scrub. If that really does help keratosis pilaris go away, then I would very much like to use it on my arms. I also added First Aid Beauty's Ultra Repair Cream Intense Hydration to my cart. I've tried a lot of different lotions and moisturizers in search of the one that will help my hands feel less like lizard skin, and maybe this could be the one. My face could use all the help it can get to stay moisturized, so First Aid Beauty's Ultra Repair Face Moisturizer made it into my cart. Have you ever experienced skin so dry that your eyelids start flaking? Zero out of ten. Would not recommend. Avoid it at all costs. Moving on from First Aid Beauty, my fictional self would also try out the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Lotion. I remember going to a Clinique counter twice a year with my mom and my sister so that we could stock up when this stuff went on sale. My sister has sensitive skin and had trouble finding cosmetics that wouldn't cause irritation, and this is what ended up working out for her. The last moisturizer that my desperation drove me to choose is the Clinique Moisture Surge 72 Hour Auto Replenishing Hydrator. I have no idea what auto replenishing means, but Moisture Surge definitely sounds like something my skin could use. After all of that, I was left with $10, which will not get you much into Sephora. I was searching for something that wasn't just a pencil sharpener or a booty mask, and I found Sephora's nail polishes. That seemed like as good a choice as any, so I got two colors of that and called it good. I got 34 items in total, spending exactly $1,000. Before tax, anyway. I didn't actually take that into account. <laughs> the average price per item is $29.41. Ended up with 7 eyeshadow palettes, an eyelash curler, 4 lip moisturizing things, 12 lip color products, a foundation, a blush, a perfume, 5 skincare things, and 2 nail polishes. Not a bad haul, though also not as good of a haul as I could have gotten from Ulta. So, am I actually going to buy any of these things? Probably not. I might get one of the Urban Decay lipsticks or a long comb one from Ulta with a coupon and or points in the future, and I guess the moisturizers might be worth looking into if my skin gets any worse from living in this infernal desert. But other than that, I feel quite content with not owning these things. I'm a frugal person in general, and my brain gets more satisfaction and happiness from remembering that I got a good deal on something or that it was only $2.50 than it would from a fancy tube or the memory of spending three pizzas worth of money on some shiny cheekbone powder. This was a very interesting activity for me, and it was a lot of fun, and now I'm kind of tempted to also do this but for Ulta, even though I know that would take so much longer because Ulta has a whole bunch of inexpensive things that I would definitely be drawn to, so I may or may not do that, but I might just get too curious and want to know what I would do with $1,000 of Ulta money, so we'll see. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching, stay safe and stay sparkly.